I want to call to order the select board meeting for August 23rd, 2022. We have all members of the board except for Mark Pentagast. We have the town manager. The town clerk is absent. Um, we have the town assessor and members of the public. Um, can we stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from August 9th. I think Patty made the adjustment that I caught, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. And I will second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. All right. We have our first public comment. Is there a member of the public that wants to speak? Then I will close public comment. Uh, we have no public hearing. We have reports of committees for Envision Berwick, but I do not believe they are, they are here. I think Jeremy's making its way in here, but I can cover some for Envision okay. Berwick. Yeah, go right ahead, please. I just want to give a shout out to the Envision Berwick committee. Um, Cyrus, Elise, Jeremy, Kevin, Kylie, Lindsay, Marie, Rick, Karen, Pat. There's countless others that were um, played a, a, a great role in, in both of the events. Um, I got to experience a, a, a team coalesce and everyone had roles and, and, and filled them wonderfully. Um, we probably had close to 300 people there this weekend. Yeah. Weather held out mm -hmm. and uh, just a special event for the Bureau community. And I just nice. want to say thanks to the police departments that were there for to help um, maintain public safety. Fire was there, EMS as well. Thank you, everyone, that was part of it. I, I just want to add my two sentences. I, I, I was down there all day helping with PCM, and it was a great event. As, um, the weather was kind of warm at, at first, but once the sun started going down and things cooled off, and the people really started coming down. It was, it was great to see you know a dozen little kids playing <laughs> on the sidewalk, drawing in chalk and having a good time. Is I'd say the people from nine weeks to 90 years old down there, and it was just a wonderful event. Everybody I talked to said it was great. Um, the team that put it together, they I'm glad I wasn't involved. It seems like an awful <laughs> lot of work, yeah. They did a great job, <laughs> yep. so and I, I too just want to shout out to them and say, you know, thank you. And uh, and they're already talking about next year and uh, maybe changing some things up and uh, making it even bigger and better. So. Awesome. Nice. If I know Jeremy, he's already yeah. planning two years from now as well. He's yeah. already got plans <laughs> and words for that. Um, but yeah, I have not heard any any negative word about it whatsoever. Everybody seemed to have a great time. Great crowd. Great performances. Um, and I look forward to seeing it grow um, as it's already done. So, uh, other department reports, we don't have any. We have appointments and presentations. Um, first, we have Don Gonarelli for the planning board as a regular member for a three year term. Is is it Don? Are you Don? I am Don. Okay. All right, there you go. step right up. <laughs> Please step up. Um, How are you doing? We're good. Yeah, right. We'd love to hear about why you want to join the planning board. You want to just give us a little background on yourself? Yes. Um, I've been uh, a resident here now for approximately 12 years. Um, I just retired from the from Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. I was former military. I was a submarine sailor and. And I was a recruiter for 15 years, so I did 21 years active duty in the Navy. Um, I was a home builder in Georgia. Uh, after I retired from the Navy, I did uh, two developments down in Georgia. And I, uh, I feel like I can offer something to the planning commission here in Berwick. I want to get involved in the town, so I'm looking forward to doing this. Uh, I have a lot to learn, obviously, because 
you know, I didn't go to college for that. I went to college for business. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Perfect. It takes all kinds, trust me. Um, James, uh, on the planning board, so do they are they down to four members? Uh, with the land use ordinance amendment, they no longer have alternates. That's right. So everyone's a regular member. Everyone's so regular there, member. so there's a full opening. Yep. Okay. Yep. So full three. Yeah. And this with this appointment, the board will be full again. Okay. Yeah. With seven. Excellent. Great. All right. right. I'll make a motion that we approve Don Garanelli. Apologize if I screw that up. Uh, <laughs> for a three-year term for the planning board regular meeting. I'll second that. Yep. Anybody have any further comments, questions? I, I just wanted to I ask, yeah, I was gonna say I had a comment too. But go ahead. No. It is um, no, you said you, you didn't go to school for that, you know, you, you didn't do good you is we don't require that here. <laughs> is the way I look at the boards and commissions that we appoint, we want people from Berwick who have the best interest of Berwick on these boards. It doesn't matter what your background is or what your education is. It's your commitment to doing what needs to be done and following the rules and regulations. So, is when you say that you don't have the experience, none of us have this experience either. Right. And look what we are. <laughs> so, well, that, you'll, well, you'll, you'll catch thank up. You. Thank, you. thank you for stepping up and willing yeah, to be thank involved. You. Well, yeah. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, and, and that was really that was part of mine. I was gonna say, you know, it's it's really just hey, that learning curve and and being a part of it and and donating your time to the to the town because that's what you're doing um and you know i know we appreciate that and anybody that steps up to any board and then the other comment i just kind of give to anybody that's on the planning board is to remember that you know we have to try to keep our bias out of it you know we have a lot that's growing in the town and really at the end of the day when somebody's presenting a project or, or something's coming in we really have to stick to that land use ordinance because that's what the voters put in you know even the same with us up here sometimes we have things that come across and whether we agree or disagree, we got to stick to what the voters put in there. And um, that's a great thing about our town is it really is back to the people. So that's something I just try to keep, have people keep in, in mind that, you know, sometimes we, we might not necessarily agree with it, but that's that's what's on the books and that's what we got to stick to, so. Hey, how are you guys doing? How's it going? <laughs> um, all right, uh, we have a motion and a second and no further discussion. All those in favor? Welcome aboard. Thank Four, you. Thank you. Four, Thank you. All right. All right. Um, next, we have uh, Sandra Sokol, reappointment to the Reformation Commission as a regular member for a three year term. Angela, do you want to speak to. Can you hear us? I see Angela on there. There she is. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. There you go. I had water in my mouth. That's <laughs> oh, <it's> you, <laughs> Yeah, Sandy just wants to um, get reappointed for her um, her position on the commission. Um, she's been a she's actually been the sole remaining person that we have on the commission since I started last year. So I would love to have her stay on because um, she's always there for whatever we need. Great, awesome. All right. I'll make the motion to reappoint. Sandra Sakol to the Recreation Commission for a regular term of three years. Uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, All right. Four zero. Next, we have uh, Marisol Michaels' appointment to the Recreation Commission as a regular member for a three year term. That one goes back to you, Angela, too. <laughs> yep. It, it. So, James, did you receive her letter of intent? intent? I, I believe I did. I don't have it with me. Okay. Sorry. So Marisol has been attending our rec commission meetings the last two times. Um, and when she's not, she's been um, asking us to update her. Um, she's actually brought a lot to the table already and has been a, a real pro advocate for a lot of things that's happening up at the field right now and, and putting in a lot of good ideas to what we need to do to kind of spread the word around. Um, so I would love to have her on the commission as well. Yeah. And, and I know Marisol from, you know, other, other adventures and she's always involved in the town and town resident kids going through parks, rec school system. And, you know, 
when you talk about having people from the town being involved in different opinions, I know she puts her time in, so. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> You're welcome, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, yeah, I guess I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Marisol Michaels to the Recreation Commission at a three-year term. And I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Next, we have Bobby Joe Hutchins. Who's here? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is an appointment to the Recreation Commission for a three-year term. What do you got for us? I'm Bobby Joe Hutchins, 97 Knox Lane. I've lived here for nine and a half years-ish, something like that. I about that. Um, I have... I want to be a part of the, the recreation. I do have some experience with uh, a rec department, and uh, Angela's doing some pretty doggone great things, and I want to be a part of it. So that's that's my spiel. That's your spiel. <laughs> You're welcome. Angela, anything? Angela left us. <laughs> no, I'm still here. Sorry. I'm <laughs> she has nothing to say. <laughs> no, I think it would be great to have. Bobby Jo on. Um, she's a voice that we could actually use on our commission um, to advocate for our department. And I think that she'd be fantastic at that. Thank you. Any further questions? I'll make a motion to appoint Bobby Jo Hutchins to the Recreation Commission for a three year term. Second. Uh, any other questions, comments? No? Um, Ed, Bobby Jo's been working with. Uh, Terry in the BCM there for quite a while now, and uh, she's been a very dependable person. So is, uh, she's always been there when she's been needed, and I would imagine she'd be the same on the rec commission. Thanks, Tom. Sounds great. All those in favor? Aye. And one abstention? Yeah. <laughs> Three, zero, one. Thank All you. Right. Welcome board. Sucker. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Unfinished business. I'm going to go back to Jeremy because he popped in. So now we can hear his report about what happened over the weekend. Hello, Jeremy. Oh, that's not Jeremy. No, that one Jeremy. Jeremy. Can't hear you, Jeremy. Jeremy, you muted. You. Probably good to get back there fast enough. <laughs> well, Terry's in there too, so. There we go. How's that? There we go. Oh, yeah. Hi. I apologize for the uh, not not so great connection. I'm uh, we're on uh, we're at camp for the uh, for the week, so I actually yeah, drove straight. Up. Supposed to be uh, offline. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, I have I have a very uh, complicated series of, of phones and computers trying to. Create I was going to say your yeah. phone's dying because of the hot spot you're running right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, I did want to um, first off just say that I think. Um, Lawn chairs was was a smashing success over the weekend by any measure. I think people had a great time. Uh, uh, we had a big crowd. The weather was perfect. Uh, the bands were great. The the vendors all sold out of their food. And all around, uh, I, I I've not heard so many uh, townsfolk uh, be so grateful and and so many thank yous and and uh, just seemed like everybody was truly. Uh, really appreciative and having a great time. And that was a great feeling. Uh, I do want to share a quick story, which is, uh, like I said, we, we got in the car Saturday night. I wrapped there at like 11, got up here by like one thirty, and the next morning out on the lake with my kids, uh, swimming. And I'd already talked to the, the, the people we rent this cabin from and, uh, and told them what we'd done, you know, what, what my weekend and the, the four years that led up to that big Saturday, two Saturdays. And she said, Oh, my, um, my nephew lives in Berwick. I wonder if he went two hours later, I'm out there on the lake. This woman is paddling out to me slowly. And she starts talking to the kids and talking to me long story short. She said, so you're the guy who uh, was involved in, uh, in the event in Berwick yesterday. And I said, yeah, yeah. I've been, been working on that for a while. She said, well, my son, is pessimistic about everything. And he's always been very pessimistic about everything. But he called me this morning before I even heard that you were staying here with the biggest smile on his face and told me that something incredible had happened in Berwick and he couldn't wait to tell me about it. 
further, she told me her granddaughter is going to college in New Hampshire and got on the phone with her. This is before she met me, knew anything about any of this. And her granddaughter said, and I quote, I never knew what I was going to tell people happens in Berwick when I went to college. And now I know what I'll tell them. So for what it's worth, I think that's exactly the kind of mark we want to make with lawn chairs. And I feel really proud of that. It was, uh, I was, I was gloating. <laughs> I don't mind telling you, I was, I was pretty much, uh, my heart went pitter pat when I heard that and I was gloating all day Sunday about it. So I wanted to share that with you all. I feel very proud of that. I think we all should. I think the best testament to the success is that that all the food sold out. Yep. Yeah. Because to me, that's the one thing you definitely don't want to have. You don't want to end the day and be like, we did not sell nearly enough food. We did. We made too much. You know, we're not going to make our money yes. back. To that, yeah. it, when people are profitable, you know, it it te- makes them want to come back for mm-hmm. more. And um, it's it, it's just good to hear. You definitely don't want to hear people not making their investment back at the end of the day. So, um, and yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Just like if, if we're just known as we have the lawn chair, you know, concert series. I mean, when I was a kid growing up in Acton, the only thing I could tell people that Acton had was the Acton Fair. That was it. And a lot of people didn't even know what that was. So, <laughs> but, you know, a, a concert series is a little bit, uh, a, a little bit more interesting, I think. So um, yeah. I'd be excited if that's what we're known for. Agreed. We we, we want to, again, uh, just say thank you to the sponsors who very generously made uh, made these events happen. They were really quite generous donations and, and moved the meter for our town in, in a big way very quickly. And obviously, you know, there was probably half a dozen, a little more than half a dozen volunteers from Envision Berwick who just made this whole event happen. And, and even, uh, I want to say there were about four additional volunteers who showed up maybe two weeks before the event and just said, I'm, I want to join. I want to be part of this and, and worked their butts off and, and had a great time doing it. And um, I, I think that that's one of the really special things about it is you look around and you say, wow, these six, eight people made this giant event for hundreds of people. And uh, it wasn't a heavy lift. It was a blast. So, um, so more to come is, mm-hmm. is I think the point. Good. Awesome. Thank you again. Yes. yes. Thank awesome you very much. Job. Absolutely. Thank you for taking time off your vacation to come talk to us about it. <laughs> of course, I was proud to share that story. With you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um, town manager's report. In front of you is the emergency plan. This is the local uh, plan. Um, Chief Plan and Carly at the fire department have been working hard on this um, to make it more concise, and stream streamlined. Uh, part of this concise 300 pages <laughs> it's more concise than it, than it was uh, part of the county part of the requirements in this plan includes trainings for the select board and department heads um, patty myself and a few others in the town have been working on one of the intro courses and it just so about when the next hundred year flood comes around everyone knows what their what their role is uh, this will be on the agenda at some point next month, either the first or second meeting in September. So we have that long to read it. Yep. Read it from memory, right? <laughs> if you have any questions, you can email me, uh, Carly, at Chief Plant. Awesome. Uh, I, we got a quote that came back from Great Falls Construction for the cost to install the vertical lift hoistway. came back at $170,000, which was more than what we had budgeted and the reason is they have to construct the hoistway the same as an elevator um, so the total project cost is two hundred five thousand dollars at this point i think my recommendation would be we should look at replacing the system we have yeah. and just know that we're going to be dealing with constant maintenance um, it's a it's a fraction of the cost. I will have exact numbers. We're going to have the company come out in September, and we can take a look at what the costs are, and then I can come back at that first meeting, and we can talk about if that's the direction we want to head in, even in the short term, to get something installed for the next two elections. We'll actually have something for access to the auditorium. And if not, then we can just we save money and we'll squirrel away money to be able to fund the entire project. Is there any 
questions on that or no i mean like it's it's inconvenient is the is the worst thing you can say about the the current system is that it's just it's inconvenient having to go around and up and all that stuff but like i mean like, i I've, I've always thought that we should if we can it's cheaper than building a whole extra section on the building you know so i mean like by arms and lengths you know it's it's a huge difference so i think exploring that makes perfect sense do you want to oh it, I, no i'm just it uh you know when you said it had to be constructed the same as an elevator with, with shafts and stuff that's not what we've been told before mm -hmm. so i'm just wondering why the difference is that you know because they said <clears throat> the way it was explained to us when we went through it before was that if it only went so many feet mm -hmm. it didn't have to be enclosed like an elevator and i thought we were under that minimum. but um I, I, I never expected it was going to be as cheap as what we were hoping, <laughs> especially after the everything's coming in with the bridges right. and everything being way over. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, as far as what to do in the short term is let's keep things working as we can. You know. yeah, just ensure that there's access one way or the other, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, ensuring access in the short term, we can keep looking at the long term yeah. fix. Right. Well, maybe somebody in town will win the Powerball and bequeath the town some money. So. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I got to remember to buy tickets. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Last thing I have, um, I think there's a couple tweaks to make to our pandemic policy now that we're in uh, like phase five of this thing. In an, in an endemic, yeah. <laughs> one of the right, one of the things uh, that was brought to me is we still have free treatment checks that are embedded in our policy, and whether they're, those actually have efficacy and catching COVID before we know about it. Um, the other one is dropping the five to 10 day testing requirement and just going right to the CDC requirement if after five days of testing positive, staff can come back because it's very yeah, I've seen yeah. a lot of municipalities do the, if you test positive, then you're out for five days and then you can return for the second five days, but you have to wear a mask for those five days. Right, and that's probably exactly what I'll be proposing at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah as long as you know, keep up with the CDC standards is, um, well, I think that's the best that we can do. Yeah, that's yeah, the Yeah, I, I was gonna say, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, what are you considering for close contact? I know the CDC just waived that, I mean. We're, I think we should still recommend if, if you're a close contact, wear a mask. I think that's, that's some language. That's what we're doing. We're, we're not asking people to stay out. We're just asking right. them to, if you're a close contact, wear a mask for five, five to ten right. days. Yeah. And that's what we did the last update. We got rid of close contacts. And yeah. Yeah. And, and that's all my comment is going to be is I, I think just we've been pretty consistent with whatever the CDC comes down with is what we're going to stick to. Yeah. And I think as things, as federally, the CDC starts saying, hey, these are where we're at and where these numbers are. I think that's going to give some reprieve for some people, and we're seeing exactly what we thought was going to start happening with seeing it as an endemic versus a pandemic, and hopefully people stay safe. But yeah, that's what it'll be. Well, that yeah, makes sense. Completes my updates. Excellent. Did you want to? Oh yes, the water? yes. Um, the maintenance level yeah. has been below the health advisory level for children since August 14th. Um, that level is 0.3 parts per million. Today it's at point zero nine nine, and it's been decreasing steadily since August 14th um, with some variation, but the, the downward trajectory, especially after the rain, um, our, the actual tests, they're a day uh, behind, so yeah. tomorrow is very likely we'll even have a lower number. Uh, yeah. lower number. So we're starting to phase out drinking water. Um, we still have drinking water available at the fire station until the end of this week. But where the level, um, it's safe to drink for, for kids and adults. Um, the, and we're handing out, we're still giving out water because there, there's still folks who are experiencing color in the lines. Um, the water department has been flushing lines today and will continue to do so. And I'll just make a note even though the level's at 0 0.99, it's still at a level, even at a very low level, 0 0.05, discoloration can still appear. Okay. 
but it's not, it's still below that um, health advisory level where there's no known uh, effects, health effects below that level. Are we updating the website and the town Facebook page and things like that, just saying that water's available until Friday or until Saturday, yep. Yep. just so that we can say that we've told people that it's going to end? Right, and if, and if you show up, I mean, if people show up Monday, we're not going to say nope, no. No, no, you know, no but we're going to give it away until it's gone. Right? Yeah. 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 Right, we're going to give away. We still have we still have quite a bit. Not quite a bit, but we've um, we've gone through it, but there is a significant amount that um, we want to give away some for the rest of this week and then distribute it among the facilities and yeah. make the best use of it. Was that all donated from Poland Spring? We, we, we bought the first small round but the rest of it thousand, talking thousands of gallons was donated from Poland mm. Spring. Poland that's Spring. awesome and that's that's that's, nice that's a that. good you know it's a nice relationship there and, a, and an awesome way for them Absolutely. to step up too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh, Select Main Communications I didn't get anything so <laughs> assuming we're good there. Um, approval of the accounts payable and payroll warrants. I have a payroll warrant from August 18th, 2022, number 10, in the amount of $87,346.86. I have a payroll warrant in the, for 818-2022, number 11, for $434.05. I have a payroll warrant for 823-2022, number 12, for the amount of $77,983.01. And I have an accounts payable warrant from 823-22, number 13, for the amount of $256,072.93. dollars I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. All those in favor? All right, four zero. Now to new business. Uh, Diamond Hill Bridge, the temporary support. And uh, who's giving this bit of information? Our bridge engineer, called the word engineering. They developed a preliminary design for a temporary support of Priest Bridge on Diamond Hill. The temporary structure can re remain in place for five years. After that point, it should be inspected if we decided to do that. So it'll last five years. It could last longer, um, depending on inspection. The plan would be to install the temporary support, which would which would increase the load, load limit there and give us some time to be able to put on the main DOT work plan for 50-50 funding three or four years from now. The costs for the bridge uh, came from Scott Construction, who was also the low bid from our initial brid, uh, bridge bid. And that was an estimated cost of, or it was actually quoted for $75,000. And the cost for um, the final design and inspection is 12,000 for a total project cost of $87,000. Uh, right now, the bridge is a major liability for the town. Uh, we could consider, you know, maybe one more winter of it. Otherwise, looking at possibly closing it off, closing it off, and just only allowing emergency vehicles to go through. So, a temporary support provides immediate support and, and gives us time to get on that work plan. What's the timeline for building the temporary support? I th think we would try to get going as soon as possible, maybe late late fall, early winter. Okay. Early spring at the latest. <clears throat> yeah, I looked at the plans, and it doesn't seem like it's a, a major, you know, yep. amount of work. But it will support, you know, you know give us that time to buy it out, and uh, hopefully, uh, with, with James said, get on the DOT plan to get the bridge going. So. We've already allocated money for this project, right, with the last last budget vote. So, um, do we need to vote again on this, or just just the 
the updated idea of using a temporary bridge, uh, temporary support for the current bridge as opposed to replacing it. But I mean, the money's already there for it to be Correct, used, yeah. and we just we, and we wouldn't be using all of it. Right. The, the, the money was there to replace the bridge, mm -hmm. so I, I I think that you no know, would be best for us to make the motion. Yeah. And, Okay. I'll allocate the money from there. No. So I'll make a motion to uh, have Caldwood Engineering, along with Scott Construction, install a temporary support on the Praise Bridge or the Diamond Hill Bridge for the amount of eighty-seven thousand dollars. <throat> a second. Any further comments? All those in favor? Four zero. All right. We have a proposed amendment to the uh, ARPA funds allocation. I have three proposed changes and an updated to the um, stormwater construction balance. And um, page two on the memo shows the overall summary of expenses. Um, the first first amendment includes an addition of forty thousand dollars to heating, ass heating assistance. And I think as we look towards the winter and potentially increase fuel, uh, to be able to have that for general assistance can help uh, a lot of a lot of folks get through the winter this winter. The second piece is seventy thousand dollars to match five percent of a one point four million dollar grant. That's for the Outfall Seven uh, stormwater project. And lastly, um, I have an update for the premium pay. Um, it includes the benefits and MPERS match, so it came in a little bit higher than what I initially brought forward. So in total, for the, the proposed allocation of the 832867 is $342,094.71 for stormwater construction, uh, for the major stormwater construction project that will help upsize a stormwater system that captures a lot of um, stormwater that comes up from Pine Hill, gets piped down to Wilson Street, cuts across to a culvert that also meets um, some a stream that gets piped in at the same time, gets piped in underneath the edge site, and then eventually gets down to the Sawmill Hill uh, intersection. And then from there, that's where we pick up to upgrade that to get to the Salmon Falls River. So that increases our stormwater capacity significantly. Um, Opera Pay, I mentioned Memorial Fields, the same oil tank, um, that's the same project. Stormwater Engineer was already approved and then it's just that Upfall 7 grant match of 70,000 and the Biba heating assistance of 40,000. On the general assistance side, um, did we use all of our general assistance last year? Or it, you know, this winter, did we use it all? It's this is a slightly different uh, pot of money where general assistance requires very specific, very specific um, requirements. Bebo, we have a little bit more. Uh, the general assistance administrator Patty has a more leeway of being able to not meet as strict of those requirements. Yeah, because the general assistance, there's like income requirements, verification, all these, you know, there's assets. Yeah, there's there's the there's a whole thing to, it's to do. Similar do verification pro, uh, process. Uh, Biba is actually an account that has not been funded lately. Okay. So, um, and and Patty handles that? Yes. Yep. And okay. this comes at the uh, request and recommendation of Patty. Okay. So is this addition to what we had budgeted, or is this in replacement of? It's, it's in re it, We're taking a little bit from the stormwater project construction light item, so it's okay. a reallocation of. Okay, but this, we've already in the budget allocated some money for general assistance. I think it's like 10 So is in a, is, this is in an, an addition, addition to. to. Okay. Yeah, in addition to. All right, it's not replacing what we already budgeted. Right, right. Okay, yeah. all right. It, it, we, we budgeted like 10000 or how much do we put in general assistance this year? Yeah, we, we cut it down a little bit this year. I can't remember the exact figure. Yeah. It's usually not terribly high because it doesn't usually get used or, you know, very right. much. 
Well, as James said, it's, it's very strict rules as far as income and assets. And yeah, I, like I that. looked at them so there. It's, uh, it's not uncommon for us to sit through a couple of those and <laughs> have to make that decision. Okay. So, okay. so what it, it, the exact changes are the heating assistance, the stormwater project for construction, which I believe we didn't actually uh, fully approve at the time. And the grant match. Those are the ones that we have to vote upon. Yeah, and then there's a um, modification to the ARPA premium pay to include benefits in the MPERS match. Right, so there's four approvals we need. Yeah. For uh, four separate allocations of ARPA funds. All right, uh, I will be looking for motions then. I'll kick it off. I'll make a motion that we. Um, allocate forty thousand dollars to the general assistance, FEBA heating assistance, out of the uh, proposed ARPA funds. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Four zero. I would make a motion to uh, use one hundred fifteen thousand seven hundred seventy-two dollars uh, for the premium pay and emperor's match. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. So I'll make a motion to approve 70000 to the Outfall 7 grant match out of the proposed ARPA allocation. Any further discussion? Second. I'll second the motion. On autopilot. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the next thing. And I was yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I will make a motion that we allocate $342,094.71 to the stormwater project construction from the ARPA funds. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? There just, we go. Just to be clear, that's 3420. I'll just make, I just want to make a, a comment on the stormwater when James was discussing what we're going to be using it for. It was, earlier we talked about the emergency management plan and the flooding. Is One of the things that this will help with is on Wilson Street, every time we have a flood or heavy water, that culvert there you know, blocks up and floods and cuts off that street. Yep. And it's right at the end of our you know, public safety way yeah. now. So... It's, uh, it's important that we take care of that. Well, I think we've seen it in some of the houses on Pine Hill Road, too, near the bottom, where it's just not draining out fast right. enough, and you see it back up into the yards and stuff, too. So, yeah, um, yeah this should help alleviate a lot of that for the residents. All right. That puts that into new... Uh oh, no, we got the TIF funds. Uh, the current, current TIF balance is 67558 It's been developing... Um, modestly over the past few years and a couple of properties are set to go from uh, publicly owned to private and with the edge developing we're going to start seeing the balance grow significantly faster than it's been. Uh, tonight's request is for to reimburse Envision Berwick for some of the lawn chairs expenses. Uh, Envision Berwick fundraised $26,250 plus in-kind services for the lawn chairs event. There were two items that came in higher than initially budgeted or un unbudgeted altogether. Police, the police detail, we had to pull in um, some other towns and the town of Berwick handles details a little bit differently now. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in the lawn chairs budget from 2019. I think it belongs there ultimately. Um, sure, yeah. yeah. But um, like I said, it, that, that was something that just wasn't budgeted. The other thing, uh, the other piece, major component, um, Roland upgraded the electrical um, right outside by the steps to a 100 amp service. Um, and this provided power to the stage, but it will also provide opportunities for uh, the car show, tree lighting, other events um, like that. And the cost of that was $7,255. Through the TIF development program, some examples of eligible costs include upgraded public infrastructure, uh, also greenway, green space amenities, and costs associated with events as a means of promoting the community as a business location. One of Lawn Chair's main purpose and tenets is to get people used to coming downtown. 
and to support local business. So to that end, I recommend reimbursing Envision Berwick for a portion of the costs associated with putting on lawn chairs 2022, utilizing $12,000 in TIF funds. What year of the TIF are we in? Five? See, we're fourth year of the TIF itself, fourth. I believe. Yeah. And we, like, it's like going up at a kind of an exponential bell, you know, rate at this moment. Like, it, not like, quite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, well, it will be. Well, I mean, like doubled, it doubled over the past, year. like last yeah. year. You know, just like just keep going up a little bit more. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments about that? I'll make a motion to uh, allocate twelve thousand dollars in the TIF funds to uh, reimburse Envision Berwick account for things that were unbudgeted and overpriced. <laughs> Not overpriced, <laughs> but over, over, overused. And, um, so. yeah. I'll second that motion. I think that, I'll just simply say, I, I think contributing to that, um, Envision Berwick did a great job raising $26,000 yeah. on their own um, to promote downtown Berwick and the businesses in the community. So I think the 12000 is definitely worth the share. Yeah, I mean, there's a net gain for the town right there with everything they're yeah. owning. And then, again, I mean, we've looked at electrical upgrades ourselves, so that's not yeah. inexpensive at all. And like you said, it's going to help with everything else that's coming around Town Hall and the other events that are going to come downtown. So exactly. it's something that we probably want to yeah. have done. Anyways. Most of it is a one-time cost. Exactly. We're not going to so, have to <laughs> redo next year. No. Uh, all right. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. 2023 tax commitment. Wonder who's going to be doing it. Oh, there she is. Hi, Karen. Hello. Oh, you're muted. There we go. Hi there. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Very good. Um, uh, today I'll be presenting the uh, tax uh, commitment information. Um, along with me, I have uh, Paul McKenney and Alex Martin. Um, I presenting tonight um, for the last time as I will be moving on to a new position and um, Alex will be taking over um, moving forward and I don't know if Paul wanted to say something as well before we get started. Um, well I just wanted to wish you well on your new venture and um, just to introduce Alex. Alex comes from um, uh, he resides in Wells, Maine. I don't know if he wants to say a few things about himself, but been there for a couple of years, um, working in the town of Wells, and is coming to us starting on Monday, uh, the 29th. So I don't know if Alex, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm from York, uh, living in Wells now. I was the deputy assessor for the town of Wells for the last two years. Um, I'm excited to work for municipal resources and learn from Paul and get to work with everyone in, in the town. Um, and yeah, I'll start on, on Monday. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody around. All so, right, welcome okay. board. Get ready for some lower numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Karen, Karen, we're gonna, Alex, we're excited to have you. Looking forward to meeting you on Thank Monday. You. And Karen, uh, I spent a lot of time sitting next to her in the planning office for the past two, three, two, two or three years. And it was a, a pleasure and a joy and just talking about everything from pickleball the sports to <laughs> our you know theories on planning and housing development and we'll miss you and, and best of luck in your in your future yes. Yes. Very i just want to say karen i'm gonna miss you tremendously and so is bauer and <laughs> i wish you the best of luck so much i really appreciate all the kind words um it's been a pleasure working with the town of berwick and getting to know all of the um you know, various, uh, the, the residents to the, to the employees in the town office. It's really has been um, a pleasure to work there. Um, I'm moving on to uh, a, a different municipality that's a little bit closer to home for me and a little bit better for uh, me and, and my family um, at this time. So it is uh, uh, torn, but I feel like um, this is a, a good move for, um, for me and my family. So Without further ado, I'd like to just um, move on to the tax commitment information. And uh, um, the uh, following uh, this, I provided you with a memo um, that uh, includes a tax rate calculation form for this year. 
also the prior year comparison sheet spreadsheet, as well as the tax rate overlay comparison spreadsheet. Um, on the prior year comparison spreadsheet, you can see that the town's um, total taxable real estate increased by $14,911.88, excuse me, $14,911,088, which is a 2.04% increase um, over last year. This increase is due primarily to an increase in the new residential and commercial um, construction that um, we've been seeing not only in Berwick, but throughout um, Southern Maine. Um, on the personal property side, we saw a decrease um, in value by $439,102, uh, which is a 5.96% decrease. Um, we also saw a decrease in the Betty um, exemption reimbursements. Um, it was by $405,204, um, which is an 18.45% decrease. The decreases are primarily um, due on the personal property side to the certified ratio dropping from 100 to 90% this year. Um, that's due to the increasing market. And we had to adjust our personal property to, um, to reflect that um, at 90%. The um, spreadsheet... Um, Next shows that the county tax appropriations uh, increased by 3.52% and municipal appropriations uh, and school education appropriations also increased by 18.779% and 5.02% respectively. Next up um, is the TIF amount. As was mentioned earlier, it has, it has increased um, and increased significantly this year. Um, from to the, this year's value is $38,519. This is an $18,923 increase, which is 96.57% um, increase over last year. The growth in the TIF is due to renovations um, to the building of, at the former prime tanning site and also the sale of 35 Sullivan Street, uh, which is a town owned property um, that was at zero value and now has a taxable value of $479,700. So that's, um, again, an increase, um, a, um, a greater increase this year than um, last year. Next is the state revenue sharing, which is up um, by $300,000. Um, and other revenues also increased um, by 58.15%. Uh, excuse me, that's an overall uh, increase for both revenue sharing as well as other revenues. The total increased at a 58.15% or $1,896,870. So a big increase there for uh, revenues for the town. Karen, what, uh, what qualifies as other, um, other revenues? Uh, that's uh, on the municipal side of things. That's um, probably excise taxes. Um, the things that um, I think maybe James might be able to speak more about where other revenues are. I'm thinking it's, it's really from the town side of collecting um, fees, yeah, maybe licensing right. fees as well. Okay. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, uh, on the spreadsheet following uh, the municipal tax rate calculation form, um, I also have um, attached a spreadsheet showing the potential range of overlay amounts depending on the tax rate selected. The minimum tax rate that could be selected is $18 and not eight cents, while the maximum rate is $18 and 98 cents. For every penny change in the tax rate, the overlay changes by $7,774.77. Um, I believe the tax rates and the overlay amounts that were uh, included in your packet um, may not include the current tax rate of, that we're suggesting of $18.22. So I do wanna just tell you that um, what the overlay amount is for that tax rate of $18.22 is $113,413. If you selected a tax rate of $18.20, the tax rate would be $97,863, while the tax rate at $18.24 would be a, would have an overlay of $128,962,000. Uh, 
um, in the overlay amount. So it is our recommendation in consideration of the noted changes in valuation, appropriations, and revenues uh, that a tax rate of $18.22 with an overlay of $113,412.90 be selected. Uh, this is a decrease from last year's tax rate of um, $18.30. So um, that is our recommendation for um, this year's tax rate. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I have a question. Um, right now it's 18, it's 1830 uh, and you're recommending 1822. Um, if we kept it 1830, just kept it flat from last year to this year, how would that affect the homestead reimbursement? Um, it doesn't. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have. If you increase the tax rate, it's not going to affect, affect the homestead reimbursement at all. The tax rate, um, if you increase the tax rate, you're going to increase the amount of overlay that um, that would be, um, you know, that would be the, the overlay. Yeah, the amount would increase substantially. I could tell you what that is. Um, if you want to hold off for just a moment. Think. So that's um, eight times um, while she's doing that. So the, what the um, the reason for the um, the deduction in the homestead exemption was because the equalization value was down from 100 percent to 90 percent. So we have to reduce the homestead exemption as well as the blind and the veterans exemption as well. So if we increase the um, the tax rate to eighteen dollars and thirty cents, you will increase the um, the overlay by sixty two thousand one hundred ninety eight dollars, which would bring it to a total of one hundred seventy five thousand six hundred eleven dollars and sixteen cents. That would be in your overlay, which would be. Um, a significant increase over last year's overlay of 117,000. So just clarification, you said you were recommending 18.22 or 18.32? 18.22, and I, I apologize, it's not on your, your, um, your spreadsheet that you see before you. What you see before you is 1820, 1830, and 1832. Unfortunately, we there was that was done prior to a couple of adjustments that were made. Okay. So the rates that we're suggesting are 1820, 1822, or 1824, and the overlay amounts for the 1820 is ninety-seven thousand eight hundred sixty-three dollars. For 1822, the overlay amount is one hundred thirteen thousand four hundred thirteen dollars, and for the eighteen dollars and twenty-four tax rate, the overlay amount will be $128,962. Okay. All right. one, one of the reasons we um, like to adjust the, the tax rate like this to the 1822 say and cut the overlay is my philosophy, one of my philosophies on this is that 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 extra money is money that we're taking out of the taxpayer's pocket and we're collecting interest on it. it is if we don't need to take that money for mm -hmm. them to hold we shouldn't it, take it. it is, my feeling is that we shouldn't take it. Correct. So that's why is I don't know if I've ever sat in these chairs and not gone against the assessor's recommendation. Is they, they go through these with a fine tooth comb and uh, they try to figure out the best avenue for the town to keep an even keel without having too much over or anything yeah. under. So that's one of the reasons I like to, you know, adjust the tax rate, you know, even if it's only a couple of pennies. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. Um, so I guess we need, I'll make an motion to accept the proposed uh, assessor's rate of 1822. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All no. those in. Oh, sorry. well, I just I just want to say, you know, <laughs> is 
is one of the things that we all get hammered on a taxes and taxes <laughs> and is I don't know how many times we've all heard it is that you know we have our taxes we don't get anything for the money as well is I believe this is the third year that we've decreased the yep. tax rate yep. and in that time we've reconstructed and paved dozens of miles of road we built new sidewalks we opened a new fire station and we've increased the amount of personnel in the town and we keep cutting the taxes and so I, I just interested to see how you know the naysayers spin this one well don't worry they will well I know I'm just interested <laughs> yeah. in and we're gonna upgrade the water department yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right any other comments no. all those in favor 1822 it is Thank you guys. Thank you. And Karen, we're Karen, good luck. You. And Alex, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Karen. I think we have one for it. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, no quick cane clean deeds. Uh, we have the tree growth supplemental right. supplement for RO52 2. Okay, uh, that one's been withdrawn, so we're, uh, we're, we're still waiting on some more information for that one, so we withdrew that from this meeting. Uh, we do have one for um, R49.3, which is So Solar LLC. Um, the uh, current property owner purchased the, uh, the property, subject property, um, and at the time of transfer, it was 51 acres. It was classified as tree growth. The property owner of the noted parcel has not filed a tree growth application with the assessing office within one year of ownership as required of new owners of parcels with acreage classified in tree growth. Um, as a new owner of a parcel with the acreage classified in tree growth, the owner can file a tree growth application with a new forest management plan or adopt the previous owner's forest management plan. The property owner can also choose to move the tree growth acreage into another current use programs such as open space without a penalty. Um, so in accordance with 36 MRS 58, 581-1A, uh, a certified letter was sent, um, was mailed informing the property owner of the statutory requirement that needs needed to be met to remain in the tree growth program and information on how acreage may be transferred into open space if so, if they so wished. Um, the pro property owner has failed to provide assessing with the documentation to achieve a, a compliance with the tree growth program. And as a result, a $500 penalty shall be assessed and collected as a supplemental assessment in accordance with 36 MRS 713B. Therefore, it is recommended that a $500 supplement assessment be charged against the parcel for non-compliance in the tree growth program. Uh, so I, this is something, I mean, we've, we've tried contacting this person. We, Karen has spoken to him several, several times. Um, the, um, he has, you know, uh, not made any attempt to, um, to talk to us at all. And Karen can speak to that. So we're, we're going to assess this penalty and then hopefully he'll, he'll come forward and, uh, complete the proper documentation. Um, this this penalty um how often can it be levied i mean is it this, is this a once a year situation no uh, i can answer that if you'd like paul yep so this is a, a 500 dollars assessment because they're not in compliance um and um the first is to is we'll send out a letter tomorrow informing him of this assessment being charged and that he has now six months to come into compliance with the program, with the tree growth program. We explain the same information that we explained in the last letter uh, in, in, um, in explaining the tree growth program and what is required of him. And if he does not come into compliance in six months time, we'll be presenting it again to you before the board to assess another $500. Uh, in the in the assess in the uh, assessment for non-compliance, and after that, at that point, um, the uh, acreage would be removed from tree growth. 
and the penalty of, of removal would be assessed. And that's a, for, for 50, what is it, 51 acres or whatever that's in there? That's, yeah. that's quite a big penalty. I, <laughs> I'm just doing the math in my head. That's not, that's not insignificant. No. No. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? No, it looks like you made plenty of attempt. It looks like the certified letter was yeah. eight months ago. So clearly just not paying attention to it. So yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation for $500. Second. Any further comments? All those in favor? All right, you can send out your letter. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you, have a thank good you. night. All no, right. Uh, you're going to need us to sign a copy of that, right? Do you have one? Uh, I do not have a copy of that, I don't think. But let me see. Uh, got, yeah, got it. <laughs> the um, second public comment. All right. Uh, we have an executive session tonight uh, to deal with uh, real estate. Uh, we will not be making any votes tonight. Um, so we won't be coming back after after executive session. So does anybody have any other comments they want to make before we go into session? All right. All right. Then I make the motion that we go into executive session under Title One Four Hundred Five Six C to deal with matters of real estate. Second the motion. All those in favor? There we go. Thank you.